I've just disembarked a cruise on Norwegian Prima where I took a journey through food that included some seriously impressive cruise ship tech and some immersive dining experiences that I will never forget. I even tested a few new food concepts along the way that I've never seen on a ship or on land for that matter. When we embarked Norwegian Prima in New York City, we headed straight for the biggest main dining room on board, Hudson's. Hudson's is a complimentary restaurant, meaning that everything here is included and the food is totally unlimited. I've been cruising with Norwegian since I was a child and I always love going to the main dining room for my lunch or my dinner. Look how happy I am here. The restaurant has these amazing floor to ceiling windows that wrap right the way around the sides of the ship, meaning that if you're in port or if you're at sea, you always have a great view. I love the design of the restaurant, including these light fittings that I think look like butterflies that kind of flutter when you're at sea. The service was good and there was lots of choice on some of the biggest menus I've ever seen. We would end up visiting Hudson's again for both breakfast, lunch and dinner during the cruise. There is a second main dining room on board too, which is a great option if Hudson's is busy, but we always picked Hudson's because of the amazing views and we never had to wait for a table as the restaurant is massive. One of my favourite things about cruising with Norwegian Cruise Line is the freestyle dining. That means that there are no set dining times for the main restaurants and you just show up and you eat when you're hungry. As well as the main dining room, there's included food in the buffet, the local and my personal favourite, the Indulge Food Hall. There are also eight speciality restaurants that focus on different themes and cuisines. These speciality restaurants cost a little extra and you can either pay for the items on the menu a la carte style or you can buy a dining package which means that you can have a certain number of speciality meals during the cruise. I booked the seven speciality meals package so that I could try as many as possible. I knew that I wouldn't be able to try them all in a week though, not with all of that included food too, but I would try my best. I've been told by multiple people that I needed to look out for the guacamole on board. Out of context, that sounded really strange, but when I did find it, I understood. The first speciality restaurant that we went to was Onda by Scarpetta. It's an Italian restaurant that serves amazing pasta, pizza, seafood, and so much more than that. The restaurant itself felt like being inside of a whale because of this ceiling, and I loved how intimate the restaurant felt. Norwegian Prima holds over 3,000 guests, but you would never know it when you're dining in a restaurant like this one. The Italian food was fantastic, but my personal favourite country of speciality dining was Mexico. Los Lobos is Prima's Mexican restaurant and we sat outside for our meal on the promenade deck as the sun set over Bermuda. We found the guacamole that was made tableside, which was just incredible. And I honestly could have eaten a bowl of this every single day with the chips, of course. I don't think any guacamole I'm gonna find at home will live up to this one because you could have it made however you like. Custom guacamole. It was so fun to see how it was made and I knew that I had booked another speciality restaurant for later in the cruise where we would see every single item of food being cooked. So I was looking forward to that. This was just like a little preview. We ordered a mix of tacos, burritos and fajitas, all of which were fantastic. And I didn't think I had any room left after eating this, but when I saw churros on the menu, I knew that I had to try and fit it in. I am convinced that desserts go into a different stomach. You can be totally full and then see the desserts menu and all of a sudden a little space opens up. Each portion of churros was a six high tower and came with chocolate dipping sauce. I didn't manage to finish all the churros, but I really enjoyed the ones that I managed to eat. We also ate in Palomar, a Mediterranean restaurant which in the description says that seafood is the attraction. Pre-cruise I wasn't really too sure how seafood could be an attraction unless there was literal fish swimming around the walls, but when they prepared this fish for us table side, it made a lot more sense. They had the most amazing roast potatoes here too, and you can actually see into the kitchen where the food is being made, which I always like, it's very interesting. Our meals were all paired with wines too, which for somebody like me who knows very little about wine was very, very helpful. As well as the speciality restaurants and the main dining room, there was also a buffet that was included in the cruise fair and open from early in the morning, earlier than I ever got up, until late at night. One of my favourite things about cruising with first time cruisers is their face when they realise that they can eat anything in this buffet. I wish that I could be there when every first time cruiser experiences that. It is amazing. At the back of the buffet was a grill that served things like fries and burgers. We would quite often pick up something from here if we were sitting outside in the sunshine. Our cruise went to Bermuda and we were very, very lucky with the weather. 
The food in the buffet changes throughout the day and on a lot of cruise ships it's pretty common to only have the main dining room and the buffet as your included options. That was not the case on Prima and the included options were some of the best that I've ever found. It was a Norwegian cruise that got me hooked on cruise ship cookies and I have to say the cookies on Prima were every bit as good as I remember. I found them in the observation lounge which had a small buffet in it and I would often come here to grab my breakfast in the morning. I'm not much of a breakfast person so being able to grab something and go suited me perfectly. I did go to Hudson's for breakfast too and that was great, they had this huge menu and I decided to go for some pancakes and fruit. This may sound like an odd thing to point out but I was very impressed with the fruit on Prima. On a lot of cruises you'll get melon, melon and more melon but on Prima we had strawberries, blueberries, kiwis, almost every fruit I can name. When I cruised with Norwegian as a child, you'd usually find me in the sports bar, which was called the Blue Lagoon back then. It served things like chicken wings and burgers, and for me as a teenager, it really was just a dream come true. I used to spend a lot of time in there playing the cha-cha slide on the jukebox and dancing around with my cousins. Looking back, that may have been kind of annoying, so if you were on a cruise with me when I was a child and I was playing cha-cha slide on repeat, I do apologise. On the Prima, the new version of this venue is called the Local Bar and Grill and it's split into two sides with the restaurant on one side and the bar on the other. We would order things here like nachos and burgers and it was always a great fast meal. Everything in the local is included and you're always welcome to mix and match dishes if you want to. If you don't want a certain ingredient or you want to just get a taste of everything, that is totally fine. There's no limit on how much food you can order either and the local is open until 3am, which is perfect if you've been out partying in the nightclub, which is also the theatre. That was very, very cool. Room service is available 24 hours a day at a charge and we used it one afternoon to order a burger and a pizza. It was great to relax on our balcony in these very comfortable balcony chairs and just to eat while looking over Bermuda. It was beautiful. Next we visited Cagney Steakhouse which is a classic on all Norwegian cruise ships. They of course serve a variety of steaks but also seafood and as a side the onion rings are always my recommendation, that and the amazing seven layer chocolate cake. I had this seven layer chocolate cake on the Norwegian Sun last year and I really hoped that they would still have it on Prima and they did. During this cruise I'd often walked by the restaurant Hasuki and I'd seen the chef singing and throwing and catching food. I couldn't really work out what was happening from the door, so I'm glad we managed to book a table there. Opposite Hasuki is another restaurant called Namasushi and Sashimi. We didn't have a chance to try that one during our cruise just because there was so much choice, but I'd often see other guests here and their food always looked good. They do sake flights here too, which is where you taste teeny tiny glasses of sake. Hasuki is particularly popular, so make sure you book as soon as possible. Our meal started with our chef preparing a massive pile of fried rice and then cooking the steak, the chicken, the tofu and the seafood. While the food was being cooked, we were given a salad, soup and edamame beans to eat. I'm so glad they gave us snacks because the smell of the food cooking made me very, very hungry. I knew that I had to go to this dinner feeling hungry because I'd heard that the portion sizes were big, but I was not prepared enough and I did not manage to finish my main. Everything I did manage though was very, very tasty. Our chef was so funny and got everybody involved in the meal by singing funny songs and cracking jokes. It felt more like a show than a meal, but the bonus was you were given a plate of food at the end of the show. I loved looking around the restaurant and seeing how much fun everybody else was having. The atmosphere in the restaurant was great and it really kind of brought us together as a group. On the other side of the restaurant was a big family group, all with custom t-shirts on. A lot of cruise lines do have strict dress codes, but Norwegian don't, and I love that. If you want to meet a new friend on a Norwegian cruise, this restaurant would definitely be a good option because it certainly is an icebreaker. By far, my favourite place to eat on board the ship was the Indulge Food Hall. This is a totally new concept that I've never seen on a cruise ship before and I found myself coming back here lots of times during the cruise. To me, Indulge felt like being in a big market hall, the type where you never really know what's going to be around the corner. The space is split up into different sections and every section has its own theme with unique decor that matches the food themes. When you sit down, you order the food that you'd like on the iPad that's on every single table and the food is made freshly and brought over from its section to you. It usually only took a couple of minutes for the food to arrive and at one point it arrived in less than 30 seconds, which I'm still amazed and a little bit confused about. I suppose it's because it's all designed to be fast food so each section is constantly making food and just sending it out when it's ready. It was all incredibly fast but despite being fast in terms of speed, it definitely didn't taste like fast food in terms of quality. 
If these dishes had been served to me in the specialty restaurants, I don't think I would have questioned it at all. We ordered sandwiches, nachos, curries, rotisserie meats, noodles, pasta, so much more than that. And the best thing was that you could order all kinds of strange things together because it was like being in a buffet, but so much better. I ate a lot of food on this cruise, but I needed to to fuel all of the exciting things that I was doing. I went on go-karts, I went on drop slides, and to find out how this cruise went beyond the food and why I love sailing out of New York City, check out this video next.